All right, time for the very quick basic tutorial on doing eyes for MLP characters. Now, depending on what's going to be done, and also eye shape, the eye shape of the eye is also something to take into account. And what I mean by shape is it varies from character to character, kind of like there's it's either an oval. Um, you know, I, I won't go into too much explaining it because it's a lot of you. You all should know what the character's eyes look like, but I'm going to do a basic oval uh, eye shape to begin with. So I like to use the uh, create ellipses and circles and arcs tool, and simply create an oval. Now, its shape it usually doesn't matter. I mean, you can you can go real wide, almost a full circle if you're doing a Philly, like for this, uh, if you're doing a Philly, it's mostly going to be a circle, but adult is more oval shaped. So I'm going to stick with something like that. And then slowly tilt it off just a little bit because the eyes are not standing straight up, they're tilted. Now, depending on what I'm going to be working on, if I'm doing something, if there's like an expression where like there's an eyebrow coming down over the eye for like an angry or concerned or some kind of expression like that or like the cheek like a cheek kind of bumping up over the eye I would use this oval as a guide kind of as the backdrop I would use that as something to follow but since I'm gonna do a fully opened eye this will become part of what I'm gonna be working on so let's begin this is gonna be this oval will be the white of the eye so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the fill on and make it white I'm gonna turn shrink the line width a little bit because it's too thick kind of makes it awkward for me to work with sometimes. So that's the white of my eye now. <clears throat> now keep in mind I tilted it away to the uh, to the right so if you're looking at the face this would be the the, uh, the left eye but on your right. Hope I'm making sense there. <clears throat> Next thing I would do is either I would start working on the pupil and the iris or I would even do the eyebrow or uh, what would be the uh, like the outline of the eye that black line that you see wrapping around the eye now I've seen it done both ways where it starts low here on the inside of the eye and ends high over here on the outside of the eye and I've seen it opposite where it starts high and ends low as it uh, arcs around I'm, the most traditional way I've seen it is where it starts low and ends high so we'll go that route so I'm gonna pick my two spots with my line and the tool I use to make that is uh, the Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Lines tool. I'm going to increase its width over here with the uh, Fill and Stroke window. To open that up, you're going to come up here to Object and you're going to go to Fill and Stroke, click it. It'll open it up over here. And I'm going to make its line width. Now, I won't go into actually setting... The, the line width is going to change depending on the size of the image you're working on. If you imported a scan, it might be pretty consistent. If you're working off a picture you took, it's going to be different. Usually with screen captures, it's going to be pretty consistent. So I won't say the exact value as... I won't say that the exact value that I'm going to put here is what you're going to use. So just keep that in mind. So I'm actually just going to kind of guess and throw some numbers out there until I find what I want. Which, that's too thick. And I kind of like that. So now I'm going to come up here and select the uh, edit paths by nodes tool I'm going to drag the line so that it follows the oval about like that so now I don't like this my point down here I feel is a little too low so I'm gonna I'm going to drag it up come back and reset this okay and I'm going to leave that alone for now. Now I'm going to move on to the iris. Oh, also keep in mind what I'm working with here as well is if this the muzzle would be here and everything. So like this would not be a three-quarter view head. This would be a side view. Since it's usually the most basic. So I'm going to do the iris now. Usually nice and big. So I'm just going to pick some points here kind of roll with it. So I'm doing this completely freehand, so it's probably not going to be perfect, but we'll see what happens. 
I'm going to increase the thickness of my line just so I can see it easier and work with it easier. And now I'm going to drag this one to follow the oval over here and actually come out past it to cover up the white. I want the iris to cover up the white of the eye. I don't want the white of the eye showing on the outside. So this edge is going to follow and hopefully just go slightly past the white, the outline of what will be the white of the eye. And then this one is going to curve back much as you see it here. Now I'm going to be doing a nice big eye for you. So that's that. I'm actually going to turn on its fill just for a random color, just so I can make sure, as you can see, we're on top of the what will be the eyebrow here, and I don't want that. So, if you remember what I said in a previous tutorial, if you hit, uh, what is it? If you have a laptop that has the extended keyboard, uh, keypad over there with the numbers arranged like a phone dial or a phone pad, you're going to find the key that says page up or page down. Tap page down, move the object down. See how it changes? Hit page down, it goes below it. If I hit it again, it goes below the white. So I want to bring it up between the white of the eye and below the eye wrap. So that's where I want it. So now I'm going to turn off the stroke, since I don't want that. Now we're going to do the pupil. Pupil is pretty much exactly the same process as doing the iris. It's just smaller. I'm going to increase the thickness of the line so I can see it and work with it easier. Same thing with this one. I want it to cover up the edge. See now, the pupil, I want it to cover up the edge of the iris and the white. I don't want the iris showing out here in front of the pupil, and I don't want the white showing out here in front of the pupil. So it's kind of you're working with it to cover, just to cover up those edges. So now I'm going to turn the fill on, but make it black, since the pupil is black. Now, since the pupil is black, you don't usually have to worry about it being above or below the eyebrow, but the, um, what's it called? The white reflection in the eye, if you have it kind of touching the eyebrow, it's supposed to be behind it because it's a reflection. So you want it to be behind the eyebrow. <clears throat> so you really won't know if it is or not, but I'm going to, just to ensure that the eyebrow is completely on top, I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to hit over here where I said the keys page up and page down are, hit the button that says home. And that will move it all the way to the top of our stack of objects here. With the pupil, oh yeah, with the pupil, turn off the stroke, because you don't need it. And when you turn it off, you'll see that the white of the eye and the iris is not completely covered, so I'll drag the edge of it just to cover it up. And then if you see this little bit going on here, I usually wouldn't worry about that, but I'm going to be a perfectionist and make that perfect. Okay, now that we have our basic structure, I'm going to select what is the white of the eye and turn off its outline, so you can't see it anymore. Oh, before I forget, I'm going to put a dark color behind it so we can see how we're working here. Change its fill to something quite less annoying to look at. So now you kind of get an idea of what we're working with here. So we have the white of the eye, the iris, and the pupil. Now I'm going to change the shape of the eyebrow. Now, what I want to do is edit basically its shape, and I can't do that with how it currently is. So what I'm going to do is hit the key command, Control alt c That is the key command, stroke to path. You can do that up here as well if you go up to path on the toolbar, on the toolbar and come down to stroke to path, and just click it, and that'll turn on these nodes you see. That'll turn on these nodes at the end of them. So what I'm going to do is I want the eyebrow to have a point, obviously. So I'm going to drag the nodes over until they make a point. Now as you can see, by dragging it over, I uncover the edge of the white. 
So you can grab the edge of it, the line, and drag it in. Or you can grab these little uh, nodes up here and drag those until you cover everything back up. So there's that point. I'm going to come over here and do this one. Click on it to reveal its node. Drag it over to the edge. Drag that one over. And then sometimes you have to grab these and play with them to find out which one is which because sometimes it'll kind of, it won't be pretty obvious which one is which when you go to start playing with them. So I'm going to increase the thickness of that. There's our basic eye structure. So now I'm going to do the eyelashes, which are over here. I'm just going to, again, select our uh, Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Lines tool. And just draw a line. And again, the specified thickness of the line here, what I... What I'm going to input is not what you're going to use based off of the image size of what you're going to be working with. So I'm just going to input a random number here and see what I like. And I think that was too thick. That was 20. That looks a little better. I think we'll go a couple points bigger. Now I'm going to come back up here and hit Edit, no edit Path by Nodes. And <coughs> Excuse me. I want to edit this line's paths as well. So I'm going to hit the key command again, control alt C to reveal its nodes. Make a point. And I'm going to drag the lines to give it that kind of curved look like you see here. Now you can draw each one individually to give them each an individual look, but for the sake of speed here, I'm going to copy paste. Slightly rotate since we're following the curve of the eye. Copy paste. Rotate this one a little more. Those could probably stand to be a little bigger. So, I can scale them each individually. That is one way you can do it. But um, if you hold, if you hold down Shift, hold Shift, and select each one, you'll notice all three stay selected. Now, you get your little box of arrows here, and that affects all three. I'm going to make these a little bigger. Okay, I like that. Okay, now I'm going to do those white reflections. I do those by using the ellipse tool again. Draw an ellipse. Simple ellipse. Change its fill to white since they're white. You're going to come up here and select... Uh, the select and transform object so you can move it. If you don't like its scale, go ahead and increase it. Again. Oop. Program's being funny with me. And then I want to rotate it slightly. Whoa. Program's like funny with me. <clears throat> and then <coughs> excuse me. Copy paste another one. Make it small. Probably something about like that. And I want them to be a little bigger, so again, I'm going to hold shift and select both. Scale both of them up. It's a little too big. Go back down. Okay. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well is the eyes are always going to have, the iris is going to be a half gradient, and sometimes little accents over here. So, I'm just going to import one of my random color guides. Find one of my random color guides here. I'll do derpies. I made these for... I've downloaded a few of these, and I made this one for derpy because I couldn't find one. So, depending on what color guide you find or what you're working off of, there'll be either two or three, probably two or three, sometimes maybe even more color selections here. So to make a gradient in the iris, what I'm going to do is first select the iris. I'm going to come over here to the fill and stroke window and make sure that the fill tab is selected. And I'm going to come over here to this little box that says linear gradient. Select it. Uh, make sure that you have the edit pass by nodes tool selected. And it brings out this line, which this dictates where the gradient goes. The square node is where it starts. The circle node is where it stops. So... The gradient of the eyes always runs in somewhat of a vertical direction. So I'm going to change that to run in a vertical direction. 
Now, sometimes you'll have to do this. Um, with the iris still selected, you probably might have to select linear gradient again just to bring it bring up this menu over here. Select edit, and this little window pops up. Now this is where you edit what's called the stops or where the different colors are. So first when it first brings it up, it'll probably have the second stop or what will be the second color with its transparency on complete zero, which means it's completely see-through. Turn it all the way up. Select the first stop. And now we're going to change the color. So I'm going to select the pick colors from image, or the dropper tool, as some like to call it. And I'm going to pass it over. I'm not going to click it, I'm just going to pass it over this uh, the first color. And you'll notice down here in the corner, you'll get this, see this number. Right now it reads, you're going to, re you're going to write down what you're working with, but it'll, sh it'll throw a number at you. You're going to write down E, or this one says E, D, A, F, I'm sorry, E, D, A, 5, 2, F. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to type it in, E, D, A, 5, 2, F. Now, there's two characters missing here, and it's uh, a double F at the end of this code, and that tells it to put it at full color, or F, that tells it to bring the transparency all the way full or to turn the transparency off, I'm sorry. That tells it to bring it so that the color is not transparent, you can see it fully. So, that's one thing to remember with these color codes. When it gives you that color code down here, it's not going to have those last two Fs at the end that it needs. So always remember to put those in at the end. So now I'm going to come up here and select the second stop, which is the lower color. And I'm going to come to this second color I have here, pass the color dropper over it, don't click it, because if you click it, I'll show you what happens. It changes the entire color of both of these and I don't want it doing that. So I'm going to deselect that. Okay, so pass it over it and the number it's giving me is E9F185. I'm going to type that in here, E9F185 and remember it needs that double F at the end, so FF and there's our two colors. You can close out that window and there's an I. This is just the basic of basic eye, this eye you would, this eye shape you would see on, I believe, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Derpy, and then whatever random background character that they throw in there. So, one thing I'm not doing, which you might see over here, is those highlights here in the eye, or the accents. Those you can do, and those are going to be in separate colors, but similar to the iris colors, just so that they match. But this is basically how you would do an eye. So, that's about it.